my name is Mel, and today we're going to continue talking about rotation numbers. In particular, we're going to talk about angular momentum and conservation of angular momentum, whereas last time we talked about the moment of inertia. So by the end of this, you should be able to calculate um, angular momentum, rotational inertia, or the moment of inertia, and your angular speed given the other two. And you should be able to use conservation of angular momentum when you're told that it applies to the problem to calculate the angular uh, velocity or the angular speed uh, based on configuration change. So what, uh, does anyone know what angular momentum is? What it is? So it's associated with spinning. Does anyone know what angular momentum is? So let's break up these two words. Does anyone know what angular is? Let me say something's angular. It's an angle. It's an angle, okay. So we're dealing with traveling through angles. So we're dealing with rotation. So angles kind of give us this idea of rotating. And momentum? Mass and velocity. Yeah. So the product of mass and velocity, it's kind of like a quantity of movement. It's a very abstract concept. So it just this quantity of motion um, that's related to your mass, your mass time and your speed. So angular momentum is just the combination of these. It's your quantity of motion when you're turning. It's the quantity of rotational motion. And it's related to the inertia, which we talked about last time and the rotational speed of the object. Okay. Okay, so does anyone, can anyone think of an example of when you would have angular momentum? On a roller coaster. On a roller coaster, you have angular momentum going through loops, right? If you're just spinning, <coughs> you have angular momentum. Uh, a top has angular momentum. So there's a lot of things that have angular momentum. And we call this quantity L. We can find it by multiplying the moment of inertia by the rotational speed of the object. So how many revolutions per second? So how many times it goes around in one second? And angular momentum has units of kilogram meters squared per second. So I'm going to go through one example. I'm going to go through the first example. And if you'd like to go through the second one on your own, uh, you can with the answer down there. So the first example reads, a gymnast of rotational inertia at 62 kilogram meters squared is tumbling head over heels, so she's doing somersaults, with angular momentum 470 kilogram meters squared per second. What is her angular speed? So we know our equation. Angular momentum is equal to uh, our inertia times our rotational speed. And we want to find what her rotational speed is. So if we divide both sides by i, then we can plug in our numbers. Her, um, sorry, her angular momentum is 470. And her inertia is 62. So her angular speed is 7.58 revolutions per second. That means she's doing roughly seven and a half somersaults every second. It's quite a bit. Does, sorry, is everyone okay with the concept of angular momentum? Does anyone have any questions? Conservation of angular momentum only applies in some cases, and I'm not expecting you to figure out which cases they apply in. But when this applies, we have an initial state and a final state. So in our initial state, which I'll subscript with a one, we have the initial inertia times the initial speed. In our final state, which I'll subscript with a two, we have
have our final inertia times our final speed. So remember, inertia depends on configuration. So whether I have my arms at wide or I have my arms in close, my inertia will change. So my angular velocity will change as well. Conservation of angular momentum just says that they're equal. So if I change, if I increase this, so if, if I increase my, uh, my inertia from the first case, then I have to slow down because I'm going to have a bigger number down here than here, so this is going to be smaller than this one. Likewise, if I increase my inertia, I have to, sorry, if I decrease my inertia, I have to speed up. I lost my clicker. It's right in the stage. Oh, thanks. Sorry, this is not going as good as last week. <laughs> so an example of this is figure skating. So to turn when you're figure skating, you start out nice and wide, like that top picture, and then you pull everything in. So when the skater um, has their arms out, they have uh, an inertia of 5.7 kilograms meters squared. When he has his arms in, it's 4.2 kilograms meters squared. The skater starts spinning with his arms out at three uh, rotations per second. How fast will he be spinning when he pulls his arms in? So for this problem, we can use conservation of angular momentum. We know that initially, he has his arm that is stretched, so his inertia is 5.7. And initially, he's spinning at three rotations per second. When he pulls his arms in, he has an inertia of 4.2. So we can find how fast he needs to be going. Does someone want to punch that into the calculator? In the park, when you go, I don't know what you call that. Yeah, so like when you spread out, it's slower, and then when you, when you, yeah, when everybody goes closer to the pole, the speed actually increases. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see those like very around on the yeah, park, where yeah, that's what's okay. you can walk into the center and you'll actually speed up. Yeah. Because you're decreasing the inertia. What about something that you'd see on stage? So like. Ballet. Ballet, yeah. yeah. So, oh, so we have our ballerina, and also in the Olympics, right? A gymnast starts out nice and tall, mm -hmm. and then when they do a flip, they push themselves up and they tuck in. So any inertia that they have from bringing their arms up, tuck in and they go faster. Mm -hmm. Similarly, a ballerina, start out nice and wide, and then when you do your pirouette, you bring in your arms, you bring in your leg, so you kind of tuck in. So Same with like diving, with diving too? Same thing with diving, yeah, when they jump off the diving board and then they tuck in and do all those flips. Same thing. So now, I'm going to ask for a volunteer. <laughs> Alright, come take a seat on the stool, please. Right, so make sure you're really secure, you're not going to fall off. Just <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have to do it right now, but in a moment I'm going to ask Keith to hold 
her arms out nice and wide. I'm going to give her a little push so she starts to rotate, and then I'm going to tell her to bring her arms nice and close. What's going to happen? Increase her speed. She should go faster, right? So let's try it. Also, if you get dizzy at any time, yeah, put your arms back out. We'll get through this and one. Oh, you can? Okay. Another one. <laughs> if you get dizzy, put your arms back out and don't pop off the stool because you will be very disoriented. Nice and secure. Okay. So arms out nice and wide. Ready? Okay. Right, pull them in. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this works with your arms too, but the the balls really help because they're really heavy. Mm. So. Cool. Eh? Wow. <laughs> Would anyone else like to give it a try? Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I get dizzy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Thank you.